What is going on YouTube? Today we are in Dranglaic Castle and we'll be taking on two of the bosses here, the Dragon Riders and the Looking Glass Knight. Um, first of all, for any boss stuff, uh, to get here, you, you can only access this after you've got the four Great Souls. And what you do is you head to the Shrine of Winter. Um, this is located in the Shaded Woods, if you go to the bonfire, which is like the, the crossroads or the the three ways bonfire or something like that. Um, and you go to the left there and you follow that path and then there'll be another little path and that'll lead you to the Shrine of the Winter and the door will open for you when you have uh, the four, four Great Souls. And then you'll get into this area eventually. Um, you just roll through this room also, so you don't have to get poisoned. Um, the the introduction to this area is amazing. You just look at it; and it's it's so epic. Like the the design of this game just never never fails to blow my mind. And the Looking Glass Night boss is another example of that. Like it was it was such a good boss fight. <laughs> um, I got it second go. I nearly got it first go. I kind of I don't know. I got ch I choked it basically. So it was a really good boss fight. And uh, sort of the right right sort of difficulty I feel, um, well, at least how I like the boss fights. Uh, the area itself is, at least in this first part, isn't too tricky. Um, there's actually a, an invader right here from memory, uh, I'm not sure if I fight him this time, but the first time you come through this area there's an invader right here, and you've got to be very careful because he's very aggressive and he uh, Constantly, if you just constantly block, you'll constantly do the the shield break and kick your ass, basically. So you got to be kind of careful with him. But uh, Dragon Rider's boss fight—it's basically like the Dragon Rider one, except there's two of them now. Um, at the start of the fight, there's one one uh, sniping you with bows from like up up to the left of the arena when you walk in, and the other one will come at you just with the halberd. Um, I, I only did this fight twice as well, I got it a second time, and what I do this time is I actually, you'll see me run over like straight towards the archer and you can get him to drop down off his perch, and he doesn't change to a melee weapon when he does this, he keeps his bow out, and basically you can you can focus him down first, he's a lot lot weaker than the other one, and you can pretty much, you can nearly kill him before he, before he changes weapons, I think I get him down to like maybe a third or a quarter of his health and then he finally swaps weapons and then I only have to hit him once or twice to um, get him down. So you see there, drops right down and he continues to uh, shoot at me with the bow. So it's just a patience thing, you got to time your, your runs and be very aware of the other guy at all times. Um, stamina management, very important. You When you're fighting both of them at the same time you have to dodge, you can't block everything because you'll get your guard broken and just die basically because like that shield bash takes out pretty much all your stamina, stamina and these normal attacks take out the majority of them so you can see here I'm doing a whole heap of damage to the the archer um, getting a heal off in this fight is actually not too difficult because the the other dragon rider doesn't attack quickly he just does um, usually one or two hit combos and there's normally quite a break in between. So you hit, see here he finally switches out to another weapon. And this is the only time that the fight's like significantly difficult when you have to deal with both of them in melee. Turtle up, you pussy. Um, so you've got to just choose your moments very carefully. You see there I nearly run out of stamina. No stamina. And then I actually do. So I was lucky there that the other guy wasn't aggro. Really lucky not to so. die. Pretty good fight. Um, there's no like, not like a hundred little things trying to kill you. <laughs> I'm s I was like still angry after the the dear Frasier boss fight. <laughs> it was kind of annoying. And then this guy, once it's just down to one, you can just fight him like you did first and just circle around basically and um, get one or two hits off. Probably just go for the one hit. As soon as you start shot. getting greedy, then you can get caught out with your stamina and then you can just lead to a death that you didn't need to do basically. Um, just using the normal Hellbird here, I'm not sure what, um, how much it, it was upgraded here. I think I have it at like plus 7 at the moment so it might have been that here, plus 7, plus 6, something like that. 
so it's a decent weapon, but it's not my claymore. My claymore's a plus ten now. Claymore's a boss. <laughs> Put the Leo ring on and it, it just wrecks. But yeah, nothing too much to uh, say about this boss fight really. It's just getting it's like that one Steen and Smario boss fight from the first game. It's just getting dealing with the two targets at the one time when they're both quite dangerous. Uh, makes it significantly harder than just dealing with one. This here actually freaking if that had a yeah, you can hear me saying it there. <laughs> if that had a perfectly time with me standing up, I would have just died. So that would have been very unfortunate. Which is why you have to be very careful with this stamina. And uh, choose your moments to attack very carefully. Um, what else was I going to say? Decent amount of money the, on the, uh, as, the, as far as the area goes, the only difficult parts are uh, you get these rooms with like the the stone right enemies right that right slowly right. come alive as you come near to them, yeah, generally in like groups of two. Um, they're quite tough to deal with, they can combo you down very easily. But the, the whole point I of them being there the is for the, the statues. Like that, the entrance to the castle, there's two statues on either side of the big door. And it took me a while to figure out that they, they activate when you kill an enemy in front of it. So it's, I guess it's trying to tie into the, the lore that the King Vendrick was like, did all these revolutionary things with like the souls. And so when you kill an enemy in front of one of these things, it activates it. So that's how you have to activate these big like stone statues that you'll see lurking around that have like switches in front of them. You have to kill an enemy in front of it and that will activate it and then they'll turn it and that's actually how you get to the the next boss fight which you'll see in a little bit um, there's some dialogue just in this next bit so I'll shut up and be back shortly these rich bastards good a bonfire Is this this bros here? God. Oh, well met, friend. Could you see you well? Yes, <laughs> very good indeed. I journeyed from the distant east to perfect my swordsmanship. And legend has it that powerful beings slumber in this land. A sword. It's been in my family for generations, and only a real man can wield it true. I may face any man or a man or beast, but none shall be a match for my sword. <laughs> cool story, bro. This land is the right mess, eh? King's gone. The people have a mad glint in their eyes. The land itself is overrun by terrible beasts. No better place to test my sword, eh? <laughs> this land is the right mess, eh? King's gone. The people have a mad glint in their eyes. The land itself is oh, no. Alrighty, so on to part two. Um, there is a little bit of stuff that I won't show in this video that you have to do to unlock the door that I'm about to go through. Uh, basically, um, you go down this path in front of me, and you go to the right, and you go up a massive ladder, and then there'll be one of those rooms with like stone enemies that I was talking about. You have to kill one of them to activate the, the statue in that room, and that activates the lift in the middle of the room up ahead. Um, I didn't explain that very well, but I'm sure you'll understand what I mean if you've been playing the game, basically. Uh, you just see me here equipping some stuff. So I, I felt like I didn't quite have enough if I had I had like some more damage in the last game. Uh, in the last try at this boss, I would have won. <laughs> yeah, that lift activates after you go up and do a bunch of stuff, basically. And you get the key here to the King's Passage. Uh, these statues come alive. If you know, if you remember which ones it is, you can kill them before they come alive. Uh, I believe it's 
it's pretty much timed, uh, so it's not when you approach them. So if you're quick, you can kill basically all of them before they come up. And there's also this regular guy at the end. So that's definitely the best way to approach this part, because if you have to fight like four of them at the same time, it's very difficult. Uh, they got like twin blades, so they melt your stamina pretty quickly when they do their combos. And they can be uh, quite hard to get a read on. Whereas these just regular night guys are pretty, pretty simple. Let's try to get a back step. <laughs> but yes, this boss, the Looking Glass Knight boss, uh, this unlocks the way to the Shrine of Amana, which is not like the next area, I guess. Even though I'm pretty sure we'll be coming back to this the castle because the queen's here and all of that jazz. But um. Really, really cool boss. I really like it. Uh, just the setting itself. The first time I walked in this boss fight, that so was just like, hell yes! It's so cool. It just, I don't know. It just looks good. And you see me here. Uh, definitely something I advise doing if you don't do it is having some green blossom before a boss fight. It like, it really does help out. And whoop! You run straight under that first attack. You'll always, well, at least the two times I did the boss fight, you'll. He does the jumping attack straight away. Uh, you either want to back away or go straight under it, basically, because the hitbox can be kind of sketchy when you try and roll it. Uh, see there, if you get hit by that attack, he has three different lightning attacks. That's one. Another one, he'll shoot like a overhead strike, and then like lightning will shoot out from the end of it. Um, you basically just have to roll that one late, and the other one's like a big AOE, which you just have to get a read on, basically. Um, otherwise it's just combos, basically. Uh, he'll get more aggressive as the fight goes on, like the combos will go to 3-4 hits instead of just 2 hits or 1 hits, like it is at the start. Um, if you hit that shield, you do no damage, so you want to sort of... Circle to the left is probably a better idea, even though I'm going to the right here. But, um, so that's it. That's the AoE one that I was talking about. When he does that, he'll take his sword back to the right after he's put it up to the lightning, and then he'll swing it around, so that's the best way to get a read on it. And here's the important part about this boss fight. He summons enemies. <laughs> he summons invaders, basically. That's the overhead strike I was talking to you. If you roll that early, it will he'll like adjust his aim last second to hit you, so you want to roll basically as as his sword hits the ground, and then it'll then you'll roll it fine, you'll dodge it fine. Um, this is like the trickiest part of the fights when there's two here. Uh, as with the Dragon Riders, it's it's just like a patience thing. You gotta get your opportunities right. Basically, whenever he starts charging up, you want to target him and just wait for wait to see what he does. Because if you try and take out the other guy while this guy's charging for like a lightning attack you'll get into trouble very easily uh, you can see me there, I, I pick off that guy but I copy hit so, but it's worth it basically because this guy by himself you can as long as you avoid those attacks you'll be fine so very cool boss fight, love the setting this guy's kind of creepy looking I uh, like his moveset. Just like these little pokes at the end of his combos the longer the fight goes on. And, I don't know, it just looks really cool. There's that jumping sack again. Uh, I'm not sure if you can block it or not, because I have no shield up there. I think it might be unblockable, so just be careful with that. There's that little poke move that I love, it looks awesome. So once again, as soon as he does this, you want to back away from him, basically. Um, you can just keep circling around him up close, but sometimes it's if you're low, low on health, you don't want to risk getting hit, basically, so just back away. You may see me here use the lightning, the gold pine resin, which isn't really worthwhile. It helps me take out the this extra guy quicker, which is the only like only positive of it. You see me there, you can actually get out of range of that if you're far enough away, it'll just stop. Um, careful with your lock on, if one's to the side and the other one's attacking, you won't block it, so... You've got to be very deliberate with who you're targeting in the fight. So 
So yeah, that that overhead strike he adjusts very like quickly, very well. So you want to roll sort of late on it, basically. We're just about done. See me nearly choking the fight, as always. I'm looking for a heal here, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, I wasn't recording commentary at the time when I uh, recorded this. And... It's, it's, it's like the spider fight. You can go for the two hit to finish him off and get the... the, like, rebound hit. It's the most annoying thing ever. That's definitely the hardest one to dodge. And there we go. It's the looking glass night. I was real pumped up. I was like, yeah. 20 gamer points well earned. But uh, yes, this goes on to the Shrine of Amana area. Uh, if you follow that lift there. Uh, very cool area. There's actually a chest just around the corner if you go out that way. Not sure what I was trying to do, I was bumming around basically. <laughs> Pop a heal. And there is a bonfire relatively uh, soon after, so I might just show until I get to the until I get to the bonfire. I was I liked looking around for stuff here. I wasn't sure if there's any parts I could drop off or what, so one thing that I think it's why this game generally takes me longer to play than other people is I I have a lot of stupid deaths and it's because I get sidetracked <laughs> and it's like kind of like exploring the world like I never stick in one area like I, I felt like I wasn't getting anywhere with the game because I hadn't I only had like one one of the great souls and then I came to the realization that I was at like the three the three other fights, like I was up to those point in those areas already, so it's just because I like spread it out. I like going in the different areas in this game. It's very, I don't know, it's very well presented. I appreciate it very much. And here's our lift. So I might just end it here. This leads down the shrine of Amana. There's like a little path. I don't think there's any enemies, but you'll get led to a bonfire. And then we will cover that area in the next video. It's kind of annoying, to be honest. There's lots of magic casters and stuff like that that just shoot at you from a distance. So the boss is pretty easy, though. So I'm not sure whether I will actually cover it in the video now that I think about it. The boss is very straightforward. So. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you all later. Bye.